and imagine the photo opportunity. How great would it be to park your electric vehicle here and take a picture of it being charged by the Bryce Canyon Solar Array? This could become the most famous charging station in America, or maybe even the whole world. And make no mistake, it is the whole world we're demonstrating this cutting edge technology to. Of our 1.5 million visitors each year, the staggering number is that 65% come from outside the United States. So these big trackers will serve as a mammoth testament to the commitment of the National Park Service in fighting global climate change. Which, as our director, John Jarvis, likes to remind us, is the single greatest threat to the integrity of the national parks that we have ever faced. Ever faced. And this is coming from a guy who knows more about the history of the national parks than even Ken Burns. Another key justification in this project is that the array itself will become an interpretive exhibit. And to that end, we've already had a little bit of time to field test some temporary signage that we can now replace as permanent wayside exhibits and this will include an interactive electronic kiosk in the Bryce Canyon Visitor Center. And just in time for a centennial event, a ribbon cutting ceremony for the array, we'll build a concrete amphitheater here so that going forward park rangers can stand right here underneath the south tracker giving presentations to school groups and park visitors about the dangers of global climate change and how if we embrace green energy, we can fight the worst of it. So why would the National Park Service, an agency who prides itself in the protection of every single square foot of land it owns, be okay with this kind of electricity generation? Well, the answer is quite obvious. As you can see, we're only using just a very small portion of ground. Where the pedestal comes down into a concrete foundation, that's only about nine square feet of ground being utilized. Everything else is up in the air. And unlike most solar arrays, this one, because it's constantly tracking the sun, doesn't produce permanent shade. We're also not going to put down a bunch of gravel or herbicides to prevent vegetation from growing. In fact, that's exactly what we want. We've replanted, we've reseeded, so that next spring a nice lush forest meadow will return, as will the deer and pronghorn. And just like the old song says, they'll probably be playing here as they graze underneath the Bryce Canyon Solar Array. Of course, this is just one of many solar arrays being installed in national parks, but none of them offers the same carbon footprint reduction that ours does. On just one third acre of land out there, that array provides the equivalent of taking 65 cars off the roads. That's twice as many cars as will even fit in our employee parking lot out there. What's more, thanks to the Array's website, anybody on planet Earth can monitor the energy generated versus what the building's actually using. And that last part's important because employees like me can then take a look and realize, well, for instance now, we're not quite there. But I know what I can do. I can do this. Okay, that's closer. Um, hey, Jeff, would you mind turning off the... Ah, that's done it. Now we're carbon neutral again. Of course, there were some trade-offs involved. To reduce shading on the array, we had to remove 70 ponderosa pines. But even if those same trees lived for another 250 years, they would never match the amount of carbon savings created by the array. In fact, even when you include the amount of carbon that went into the manufacturing and the transport and the installation, plus two and a half centuries of those trees' carbon storage, this array could still cancel all of that out in just four months of operation. But I think in the grand scheme of things, and in the face of global climate change, that's a small price to pay. Because it's become increasingly apparent that if we're going to save the national parks from the ravages of global climate change, we're also going to have to inspire the rest of our fellow Earthlings to help us save the entire planet at the same time. That while it's not going to be easy, it's not nearly as impossible as some would have you believe. Oh, I can see now that the sun's fully up, so I guess it's time for the three of us to go back to work, me to my office, and these two dual-axis trackers to keep tracking the sun.